Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Roundabout Books. My name is Julie, and I'm the events manager here at the store. We want to take this opportunity to acknowledge that our bookstore resides on the ancestral unceded land of the Confederate tribes of Warm Springs. In our immediate area are also the unceded lands of the Confederate tribes of Selects Indians and the tribes of Grand Ronde. We encourage everyone to learn more about the land you occupy and the story of its peoples. So how many of you are visiting our store for the first time tonight? Please by a show of hands. Thank you so much for being here. And also thank you everyone for making our new ticketing system work so well. It really helps us on a bit break to see how many chairs we need to put out. Because as you can see, we have used every single chair we have in the store tonight. So thank you. We do have two, so if there's anybody, yeah, we'll, we'll squish everyone in. So as our second event of the year, you are now the goal to be for attendance. So thank you. Um, we're also instituting a new ticketing system for future events where there will be a $5 fee or you can pre-purchase the book. And that helps us keep bringing authors in and it also helps the authors because they need to be selling the books to show that their publisher that these events are worthwhile. Um, so just watch for that with our events that are on our calendar. Um, some of those events that are coming up, so next Tuesday, January 24th, Portland journalist Josephine Wellington will be here to talk about her debut book, Where We Call Home, Land, Seas, and Skies of the Pacific Northwest. And on January 26th, then resident Lauren Freshman will be here to talk about her memoir, Good for a Girl, A Woman Running in a Man's World. So check out roundaboutbookshop.com for more information about our events and book clubs. And now to the reason we are all here. I'm going to just introduce you very briefly because I feel like either a lot of people in here know you or they're going to get to know you. <laughs> so, Josh Savage took his passions and integrated them into a full-time lifestyle. Originally a native of the South, he, his wife, and his two daughters sold most of their possessions and began traveling the world. When they landed in Bend, Oregon, they immediately fell in love with the your bio. <laughs> Fell in love with it and now call it home. With so much natural beauty to explore in the Pacific Northwest, Joshua is, a, is constantly on the hunt for new adventures, and tonight he's going to show us some of those about Bend, Oregon. So please welcome Joshua Savage. Hi. I like to walk around quite a bit, move, so I'm going to do that instead of just standing here, right? I'm a teacher, so bienvenidos. I speak Espanol, so I'm kind of used to talking in front of crowds, but this is a little different. But anyway, she gave a great idea of the bio, and yeah, we're from the Memphis area. We are Tennesseeans. So when I say that, because basically we're right on that corner. So has anybody been to Memphis? Raise your hand. Okay, so Memphis is basically a sub. A lot of towns at the northwest corner of Mississippi, or I should say, suburbs of Memphis, kind of went back and forth, coming back and forth between, probably for like 40 something years. So the accent's not going away, right? And, but we, as much as I still love the South, we were ready to get out and explore the United States for a bit, to explore the world. And it was a good time. My daughters were young, they've grown up a lot since then. But uh, basically, we traveled. We were on the road for quite a while, about a year, a little more than a year. And I uh, wrote, basically wrote school, or homeschooled them. I was, uh, my wife was a travel nurse, so we bounced around, stayed some places for two or three months at a time. I did online teaching, so I was kind of remotely working before it was a thing, which was kind of cool, right? And then, along our way, we use these guides because if we stop at places like Albuquerque or uh, Asheville, North Carolina, these are good guides. They give a lot of information. It's real brief, you know what I mean? So if we're staying somewhere for two or three months, I would get an idea of like where to go, what, what hikes to do in the area, what breweries to go to, restaurants, different things. And so, yeah. So we landed in Bend, and when we got here, they didn't have one of those those guides, right? So I called 3D, 3D Press, which is the publisher, and I talked to him for a minute. I said, are you going to write one of these guides? Do you have any plans to? And he asked me some stuff about my background, and then basically said, well, why don't you write one for us? And I said, well, I've been here less than a year, 
but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and so what I did, and this was, you know, about five or six years ago now, but I volunteered to visit Ben, which gave, gave me a lot of information. So I got to talk to a lot of tourists coming in. I talked to a lot of residents, long-time residents, and basically a little fire under me and my family just to get out there and explore as much as we could. <coughs> and we did, and we still do, right? I did a lot of research, you know, just doing different things. And the first edition was in 2019, towards the end of the year. Uh, a lot of fun to write. And basically, it, it sold well enough. They sold most of the printed copies, and so they asked me pretty recently to write another one. And I said, yeah, I can do that. And I was saying that we get out there and explore as much as we can. And so Ben and Ben for about five years now, we've kind of expanded beyond Ben, right? And what I like to do, what helps me travel as much as I can is to kind of set goals. And one of the things I set goals for just here in Oregon, like smaller travel goals, uh, this past year, my wife and I, we got to do the South Sister Summit, right? We did Crane, Prairie Springs, Crane Hot Springs pretty recently. Has anybody been there? Really cool spot, right? We went back there just a couple months ago. Uh, this is, I believe, Matthew Lake. We're always going on new hikes. Every time both of us have off at the same time, I mean, we're out about to exploring new hikes. This is the Strawberry Wilderness, which is really beautiful. I'd say probably the Eagle Cap Wilderness and the Strawberry Wilderness, two of my favorites in Oregon, both are beautiful, beautiful. We did some overnight and stuff this past summer. So now, in 2003, I don't have any pictures yet because I haven't been to these places, but I've set myself some goals that I want to do. And you can tell most of these are outside of Bend because I've still got a lot to explore in the Bend area, but I'm kind of branched out. Astoria, for example, there's always going to be hikes in Mount Jefferson Wilderness, Brighton Bush. Has anybody been there? Nice spot. Is it worth going? Yeah. The Chinese American Museum near uh, John Day. I really want to check that out. I'm going to raft, whitewater raft with my daughters this year. Right? They kayak and paddleboard quite a bit, but they've never been whitewater rafting, so I have to give them that experience. What do you think? <laughs> okay. So, anybody have any 2023 goals in Oregon or in the area? Travel goals. Yeah. Um, we just discovered uh, this place called Timber Gulch. Timber Gulch? Yeah, um, it's part of the, uh, an overall um, area called, like, the, I want to say it's called the Leslie Recreation Area. Maybe it's the Leslie Gulch. Oh, Leslie Gulch. Leslie, Leslie Gulch. Gulch Recreation Area. What part of the uh, Oregon? It's in the southeast. So it's a long way from here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a big state. I tell my friends why they automatically, my friends from the south, they automatically think Portland, they automatically think anything with, they don't realize this is such a large state. Oregon's Grand Canyon versus the Milwaukee River Canyon. Yeah, I have heard of that one. I heard of that. Yeah. Southeast Oregon, I really want to explore more. Anybody else? Yeah. I just recently saw the That's one place on my list too. Like they're, they're, they're expanding the campground up there, build another entrance. But I mean, this, and that's one of the reasons we decided this is a good spot to stay because there's so much to explore. You know, even being here four or five years now, we, you know, we just touched it up. Anybody else? 2023 goals? Yeah. Okay. All right, how about a little trivia? Let's see what you know. And a lot of these are all in the books. So if you've read the book, you've got to advantage. Right. So which famous actor once played for a Ben baseball team? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and raise your hand if you know. I'm glad they call on you. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. <laughs> Kurt Russell. Well, there's questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, Ken Kesey's novel. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was made into a film with Jack Nicholson. 
<laughs> you must know this one. The movie was filmed at the Oregon Mental Hospital in Salem. When the hospital was demolished, one business in Bend purchased the wood and used it in their restaurant. Were they brewing? So yeah, it's, if you haven't been to Worthy, I mean, besides just the, I mean, you see, you see pictures of him and Jack Nicholson everywhere, but you also, they've got the hot observatory, they've got a garden. So Josh, we actually hosted Ken Babs who just yeah. wrote a book about him and Ken Kesey, and we did it at Worthy because the owner is still so connected to them. Yeah. And Ken Babs was a hoot. I got, he's been twice now. I'm yeah. the first time he came. Yeah, yeah. he was hilarious. He tells a lot of old stories about the, those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a little easier, I think. A pair of sagebrush sandals dating back over 9,000 years, supposedly the oldest in the world, were found in this particular world. Where? Fort Rock. Fort Rock. Woo! Yeah! Woo! You can only answer once, though. We're going to give it a break. Okay. Bend is one of four cities in the United States that has a volcano within the city limits. Which one of the following cities does not have a volcano? Jackson. <laughs> I think you get your first. I'm sorry? Yeah, A, Jackson. No, you think that's not. Portland? No. No, actually, I think, yeah, I don't believe it is Portland. Hold on. You got the answers after. Portland has a volcano. Portland has a volcano. Portland does. Portland has a volcano. Portland does. Okay. So at least you. Yes, yeah. Now, believe it or not, everybody. Just about everybody picks A. Yeah, it's right? It's but it is in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. And I think we did, I forgot the name, last time we were back in the South, we did a road trip through Mississippi, and we actually walked up the highest ele elevation hill. I think it was like 800 feet or something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, but yeah. The, okay, last one. This downtown building began as a saloon, then burned, then was rebuilt as a hotel. It's got quite an interesting history. And then burned again. It is now full of businesses and holds two of the destinations in the book. Just one of the, I mean, a lot of people know the building, but they might not know the name of it. Oh, not know the name of the building. Yeah. Is it the O'Kane? The O'Kane building, right. So that's the big building. It's got Vector Volcano. It's got a... Uh, uh, the record store, the vinyl shop, branch records, Smith Rock records now, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. You know this. See, we do these trivia questions quite often on our uh, Facebook group, and you can win prizes that way as well. A lot of fun. Yeah. A little bit of trivia for you. Anybody have any been trivia for, for to share? If they want to share? I always like to hear new things. You know? All right. So the book itself, if you look through it and stuff, you'll notice it's kind of divided into categories: uh, food and drink, arts and entertainment, sports and recreation, culture and history, shopping and fashion. I had to help them, or they had to help me, I should say, actually write that part to pick out some places. Okay. And we got itineraries in there. We got ideas about season. So quite a bit. And I'm not going to read all the way through all of these, but basically, each section, they've got, and each, each number out of the 100, they've got kind of something started off, and then just kind of a little quip, you know, it's not super long, it just kind of gives you an idea of what to expect there, uh, what you might like, and instead of reading like a long, long, you know, pages of information, some of them have a little history in them, different things like that. Has anybody been to Velvet before? Okay, it's a nice little spot, a lot of good drinks. Mostly for adults, like I said. Okay. Okay. Cascade Lakes are definitely a popular uh, place to go see. This is Hosmer Lake. 
probably the best for paddle boarding. Anybody have a favorite lake? Little Baba. The, yeah. Little Baba. Okay, so that's Cosmo there. All right. Alpacas. Has anybody went to see the alpacas near Smith Rock? A lot of people, right? No matter what age, I, my niece, she's like 10, when she came in town, we took her. And my friends who are like in their 40s and stuff, we take them as well. Everybody likes alpacas, right? So you can pet them, and sometimes they'll you know, try to bite your hand off. You know. They're very cute. And you can take one home. They do sell them. It tells you a little bit about that in there. For the longest time, my youngest daughter, she's not here tonight, but she, she basically like did little reports and stuff like that because she wanted to bring one home, right? And where we could put it, how we could feed it, and all that stuff. So did you bring it home? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So if you've been downtown, you've definitely seen the alleys. Tin Pan Alley is mentioned here, and basically, I mean, you've got a lot of art down there, right? It's kind of like starting to spill into the other parks, not just downtown, but the other alleys, the parking garages. Uh, they even call like the art at the old mill the Tin Pan. Now the art collection now, right? So there's San Simon, another one. We've got Tin Pan Theater in that little corner. So a lot of cool little spots. And what I hear is they're gonna expand it and they're gonna try to make like the corridor from there to McMinimums, which would be really cool. That's in the works, they say. Now, I've always wondered, this is kind of outside of San Simone, kind of a harder picture to find. Who can tell me who they think that is? Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan was my first guess. I thought Bob Dylan or Lou Reed, maybe. Right? Is it Elvis? I don't think it's Elvis. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I have, I bet, I've even asked people inside, they don't know either. Johnny Cash? <laughs> but anyway, I'm just wondering to get more. And Bob Dylan, you know, that's probably the most common answer, so that would probably be my guess. But cause he does, if you look at it closely, he's got kind of that really just look, you know. All right, what have you done in the book? And you might not know if you don't have it yet or if you haven't looked at it. You don't have quite enough for everybody, I don't think. Maybe the group you're with has had some of these around. Maybe pass them. This is Ben Bingo. Especially since there's not enough for everybody, maybe just kind of maybe you can put your initials in and pass around if you don't mind. Are you going to call them out or are you going to have to? Yeah, I just want to see which ones you got. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's been here for 20 years or more? 30. 40. I'll fight you. Born and raised. Really? Okay. 
I just like to meet other people who've been here that long, like who really like have seen it evolve. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear like your opinion of because I hear both sides. I hear some people who cannot stand the growth. And then I hear other people that grew up and they used to talk about how they had to drive to Portland and Eugene to go shopping. They used to be rebar by the river and they couldn't swim in it and stuff, so um I think I love it again because I spent nine years in Portland for grad school. So like coming back it, it makes me appreciate it. The housing prices could come down any time <laughs> and I wouldn't be sad. But no, I still love it. I when I see people complain about that, I just think Yeah, you just I love it. Yeah. tell you about, you're seeing these envelopes getting patched out, and you're like, what in the world is it, right? It might have something to do with the scavenger hunt, since it's the ultimate scavenger. <laughs> so basically, what we've been doing, and a lot of it started with the book, but I actually had this business kind of before uh, we even got to Bend, but it's really grown the last uh, year or two. And what we do is, you might see them on TripAdvisor, or Booking.com, stuff like that. A lot of tourists can come in and do them in town. And a lot of locals, what they do are these bin photo hunts. Right? We have these like once a month, and uh, basically every month. And basically, I just give some random pictures. Like, you know what this place is, anybody? Yeah. All right, what about, you can't really see that one. What about this? Okay. Yeah, those are kind of small. But Miyagi, the, the noodle bar. Yeah. Right? Of course, this one's a little easier. There's the hop observatory that I was talking about. Right? So basically, I give 10 pictures, and most of the locals do this one. They just basically get a folder and they run with it. They try to find as many as they can as fast as they can, right? And they usually they get a prize if they win. Some, some second, third, we find them all pretty quickly, get a prize. And we do city, like what you all got are the citywide and, and uh, downtown hunts. So it's kind of like a best of, or some of them are pretty tough. Some of the clues are tougher than others. Uh, 15 to 20, 25 clues sometimes. So you don't see how many you know. It's, it's a fun endeavor, a lot of fun. And like I said, we have them quite a bit. We do, uh, we have activity books online for sale. We've been doing uh, groups, businesses, a little everything else. So some of you, I think, got the citywide hunt, and some people got the downtown hunt. So if you want to trade or something, you're welcome to And yeah, so you can find me, a lot of links I have on here. It'll lead you to my children's books that I wrote with my daughters, and my fiction, and other books. Uh, I write for the Bid Nest, do the outdoor section most of the time for them, and the Source, and other magazines sometimes. And anytime you want to get in touch about the book, about Ben, if you want to take Spanish lessons or anything like that, you're welcome to get in touch. I appreciate it. Okay, any questions? Preguntas? Okay, yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, I like hearing that too. I'm always up for it because I mean, maybe they'll ask me to write three or. A lot of ideas with the stores and different things that way. They gave us a couple earlier for their travel goals, right? Anybody? Um, he's a historian, and he was talking about how he was looking at different places to go and
called the cruise. It's free. I mean, it's just. Yeah, it's free. Well, I don't remember. I think it's called cruising. I actually got it. Cruising history or something. Well, it's if you look at the shorts, the shoots of the historical museum, it's on there. Huh? Yeah, I couldn't hear that, but the historical museum around Halloween does some tours around town. Those are really interesting. Yeah. I can recommend uh, Palmer Cafe is a long time breakfast spot. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not under, under the radar. It's on Greenwood, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like the High Desert Museum? Definitely. Yeah. That's another place I think kids love when they come to town. I work in them. Like, Ice caves they used to have been. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where in the late 1800s or the 1900s, the city had stored their ice. It's still there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, around like Boyd Cave, is that in that area? Close. Yeah. 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 Yeah